All right, chap. So we solved this class, uh, this question in class, um, and I just want to solve it again. I want you to write down how I did this in your notebooks. Take a picture of it and submit it so I know that you did it for your homework. And the problem was this: it's the exact same problem. We have got a car traveling three meters a second. I've got another car traveling one point five meters a second. Uh, I'm just putting these little imaginary people on the carts for reasons that will become clear shortly. Um, and I asked you at what position should the two cars hit each other. So somewhere over here, right? They're going to hit each other and they're both going in the same direction. I don't know why I did the speed in that box. Um, so I want to show you another way of doing it. And this is actually the smarter way of doing it. Um, and that is to use this idea of relative velocity. So here's what I want you to think. We were looking at this from like the side of the road, from the side of the lab, looking at one car going three, the other car going 1.5. And we can analyze that. We're using the lab as a reference frame, um, and we can analyze that using a system of equations. However, there is another way you can do it, and that is to use a moving reference frame. And when I say a moving reference frame, what I mean is, imagine you're this bloke here. You're a tiny little invisible fairy stood on top of this lab cart that's going three meters a second. All right, this is still 1.0 meters away. Now, from your perspective, you're not moving, right? The rest of the world is moving. Like, if you, you're driving in a car, you're, you're not moving relative to the car, the rest of the road, and everything's going backwards, right? But if you look at this car here, um, you're compared to the lab going 3 meters a second. This car's going 1.5. I wonder if I can easily change color. Can I change color? Let's try and change color. Then from your perspective, this cart is actually coming back at you at 1.5 meters per second. Think about it. If you're going, both going 3 meters a second, you'll stay the same distance apart. But you're actually going, you know, 3 meters a second compared to the lab. This guy's going 1.5. So from your point of view, this guy is actually coming back at you, towards you, at 1.5 meters a second. And that is all the information you need, because you know that this guy is one meter away. Uh, from your perspective, it's like you're approaching a slower moving car, and he's coming towards you at 1.5 meters per second. Then you have all the information you need to figure this out. What I'm going to do is start with my velocity equation. Velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. Uh, I still need to find the time. If I can find the time it took... Uh, to hit this guy from when, like, this guy goes from a meter away from me towards me, um, then I can figure out from the lab point of view how far I've gone. So let's rearrange this for time. I'm going to multiply both sides by t, so that gives me velocity times time is equal to delta x, and then I need to get t by itself, so let's divide by velocity, divide by velocity, uh, and this is going to yield uh, the equation... Um, time is equal to displacement over velocity. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my numbers, which is uh, delta x is 1.0 meters, and this guy is coming towards me uh, at 1.5 meters per second. And if I do 1 divided by 1.5, I personally like fractions because look at this if it's one meter if i turn 1.5 into a fraction that's three over two right meters per second like 1.5 is three over two three three halves uh, and now i've got a complex fraction which is really easy to fix because all i do is multiply the top and the bottom by the uh, inverse of the bottom so instead of three over two it's two over three this cancels out the cancel out, cancels out so long story short the time is going to be two thirds uh, of a second. All right, so it takes me two thirds of a second for this guy to hit me. Time is equal to two thirds of a second. Now that I know that the time is equal to two thirds of a second, I can figure out how far I've gone because uh, velocity is equal to delta x over t. Uh, I can rearrange this for delta x. All I've got to do is multiply times both sides. Um, so that gives me, and times cancels out, boop, 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 delta x is equal to the velocity multiplied by the time. The velocity I am traveling, now i got to think I'm now on the lab frame, right, the lab frame of reference. So if I'm still in the lab and looking at this, this person on this car, then this guy is going 3.0 meters per second. But I know in two-thirds of a second, 
they're going to hit. Now, this is why I like fractions, because I have 3 times 2 divided by 3 makes it nice and easy. That is going to give me 2 meters. This is, by the way, the exact same uh, answer I got before, but I did it different. But again, it all comes down to frames of reference. Uh, you can have a moving frame of reference. Again, if you imagine you're on this guy, uh, you're no longer going 3 meters a second. You're, you're not moving at all, right? Because this whole frame of reference is um, moving at 3 meters a second, right? It's all moving at 3.0 meters a second. That means that this guy is no longer going 1.5 compared to the lab bench. He's going negative uh, 1.5. It's actually what we call Galilean velocity addition. Um, but either way, he's coming towards you at 1.5. If you can get your head around that, it's actually a pretty easy problem. So again, I'm hoping you sketch this down in your book like the easier way. I won't say easier, a different way of solving it. Take a picture of it, submit it to Google Classroom. That's your homework for tonight. All right, that'll do. Why out. Except I can't find the pause button. Pause, pause, pause. Pause. Okay, why it out.